Welcome to Strings and Len Lecture. So letters and numbers in a string are called elements, and the elements in a string are immutable. Don't worry about what this means right now, you'll learn by the end of the lecture. Then we have a built-in function or method called len, and what it does is counts the number of elements in a string, list, set, or dictionary. So for example, we have a variable called greets, which is equal to the string of hello world. Then we apply the len built-in function and we get 11 as the output. And the reason for this is because we have a total of 11 elements within the string. And this might seem a little bit odd because we have actually a total of 10 letters here, but it's also counting the number of spaces and we have one space here. If we had no space, then we'd have the output of 10 instead. Okay, so what we're gonna do is start off with a very simple cat equals, let's say, meow, naturally. We'll have a semicolon to keep on the same line. We'll have dog equal to, let's say, Woof, semicolon, or have parrots equal to, instead of double quotation, it'll be single quotation. Hello. And then we'll have prints, we'll do cats, dog, and parrots. And as you can see, we have the output of all three. And note there's no actual quotation marks around them. Okay, we can also do a empty print statement like this, so we can have some space there. And I can simply hide that as well, just double clicking, like so. And what I can also do, is if I go inside the parentheses here, then hit Shift and Tab, you can see I have set and end here. So what I can do is let's try the set first, set, which is a parameter, and we'll have this as a comma. And you can see it separates all of the strings here, meow, woof, and hello. Alternatively, I could have, let's say, a dash, or I could have exclamation marks, which doesn't really make much sense. So what I could do is change this to an end, like so. All right, so moving on from that, what I can also have is a string of, this is a, and then you put single quotation marks, quotes inside a string, like so. All right, and let's say I have day equals, good day in caps, then night equals, good night lowercase. I'm going to do len day and you get eight here. So for day we have a total of seven letters but we also have a space here so that means that we have a total of eight elements. So if I make this just seven now, you can see I only have seven here because there's no space there. If I make two spaces, I get nine. All right, so let's say I were to do day dot tab. You can see all the various methods and functions that I can apply to the string variable day. So I can capitalize and I have good day. And note that if I have it like this, I just get function string capitalize. And it's saying str here because if I do type day, you'll find that it's a string. So that's a type of variable that we're dealing with, a string. All right, so just make sure you put the parentheses here, otherwise the functional method won't perform the task. So you can see it's capitalized. And I could do, let's say, because this is all uppercase, I can make this lowercase. So dot lower. And conversely, with the night, which is all lowercase, I could do dot upper. And as you can see, it's all uppercase now. All right. So moving on from that, let's say I was to have lang equal to, put in, let's say, python, and I'll do this is a cool plus and then lang plus course and what this is is called string concatenation so you're concatenating the string with these plus signs here i could just change this to let's say java or i could put this to c plus plus and so on all right so let's say instead of it being a string it could be a number so there's actually an issue here. So let's say we have num equal 20 as our variable, then we have lecture plus, and I put in num plus is on strings. Well, I'm gonna get an error here, specifically a type error, and it says must be string, not int. So if I have to do type num, of course you get int, short for integer. So what we need to do is convert this num into a string. And we can do that by simply doing string around here like so. And it's useful because I can just change this to let's say 40 or 100, etc. All right, and then let's say we have 20 plus 
50. What's going to happen here? Well, we just get this here, which is just 2050. What if I want it to be actually 70 as the output, so an actual mathematical operation occurring? Well, what you can do is use a Python built-in function. I do type eval. And this is going to convert the string numbers, and it can only be string numbers, into actual integers or floats. So, for example, if I have, let's say, eval of, let's do 45 points, Three. Now you have a float here. If I were to do type, we should get float as the output, as you can see here. Okay, so let's. I'm going to have eval. We'll do twenty plus eval. We'll do seventy. And you can see that I have ninety here. Or I can do this too. Let's say fifty. Okay, so you've got seventy there. So moving on from that, let's say for instance I were to have eval of Let's do 20 plus 50. You can still see I get the same output here. And I can change this as well. It doesn't have to be a plus sign. It could be multiplication. So I get 1,000 or division. I get 0.4 minus so subtraction minus 30. Or I can do this rather large number, as you can see here, which is just to the power of. So 20 to the power of 50. All right, so moving on from that. Let's say, for instance, I want to have check equals, and we'll just do just some letters. So A, 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 we'll do B, 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 and we'll have, let's say, a C and a C. Well, that's, and let's say I want to do check dot count. I need to know what I'm looking for, so I'm going to count A. We should get four, as you can see here, because we have four A's in this string. And likewise, if I do B, I get three of these lowercase b. So note, of course, that Python is case sensitive. So if I do capital B, we just get one. And of course, with C, we get two. Right, so moving on from that, let's say we were to take a look at a doc string. So I'm going to have this as, we'll call it messy actually. And it's going to be, instead of just this, so you do it once, then twice, and then three times. And you can get this. So it has a total of six double quotation marks. And in the middle, you can put in, let's say, in caps, please, and this is going to be clean up this messy doc string. I'm going to make a new line here, which can have multiple, I can type, multiple lines of string. All right, and then I'm going to actually make this messy. So what I can do here is put in just something random. So we'll have, let's say, hashtag and a at sign. Put another one, maybe, let's say, here as well. Hashtag and at here. And also I'm going to put in, let's say, backslash here, backslash here. Put in backslash here. And I'm also going to have, let's say, two dashes two dashes, and two dashes. Okay, so let's do messy. It's going to be pretty messy, as you can see here. So what we can do is, let's say we want to clean this up. We can do dots, and note if I do just tab, I can then have replace. And let's say I want to get rid of, well, all of it really, so we'll get rid of the backslashes, the comma, on that so you can see the backslashes are gone now if I want to get rid of the others I simply do dot replace again which is a pretty cool feature of this particular method or function and we'll have this as like so okay I don't really like the space though so I'm just going to get rid of that okay and then we'll have dot replace dash dash Okay, so we have these slash ends here. So what are they exactly? Because I didn't add them in. But what it is, it simply comes about as a consequence of making new lines here. So we have one, two, and so we have one and two here. So what we can do is simply get rid of those as well. So dot replace slash n. And there you have it. I'll just make a space there. Great. And I can also do dots 
lower. So it's all lowercase now. Please clean up this messy doc string which can have multiple. So I'm going to make that space there. Okay, so it's not that one. It should be. Nope. Okay, I made a mistake here. That should be I. Capital I. There we go. Okay. So moving on from that, let's lastly take a look at what I mean by immutable. So pets equals, say, cat. Now we can index this, so if I were to do pets, then zero, and Python starts at zero for indexing. We can get C, and then I'm going to do one, and we'll get A, and then two, we can get T. So let's say, for instance, I want to change the C here to a B, so we can have maybe a bat instead of a cat. What's the problem here? So if I do B, we're going to get an error. It says type error. String object does not support item assignment. And what this means is that strings are immutable. So you can't reassign a particular string to something else. Okay, so that's a particularly unique feature of strings, and just bear that in mind. Okay, so I hope that's been insightful, and I hope to see you in the next lecture. Thanks.